Hi, this is Matt Oskamp from Apple Fall Cider Company and Campbell's Orchards, and you're listening to Cider Chat. Episode 154. Hello and welcome to Cider Chat. My name is Rhea Windcaller and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. This week, we're going to be finding out how Apple Falls a Cider Company up in Prince Edward Island is turning straw into gold. But before all that, there's going to be a little bit of news out and about in Ciderville. I've been kind of curious what's been going on with Current Cider, which is based in Pennsylvania, ever since they opened up their Fishtown location. And Fishtown is a sub-neighborhood in Philadelphia proper. So they have this tasting room. You know, it's one of those big doors that open up when the weather's really nice out to the street and has a long bar. And there they are serving their craft ciders and also some craft beer because Joe Getz, who's really the cider maker there, he is on both sides of the ladder, if you will, on the craft beer ladder, going up one end to beer and one end to cider and has been really working it to try to put cider on the map and keep the focus going forward. So always a big tip of the glass to Joe and to the folks at Current Cider for the work that they're doing. He's also very involved in the Pennsylvania Cider Guild too, which is Pennsylvania's association. Uh, Because there's a lot of farmland in that state and there's also a lot of orchards and an increasing interest in cider as we're seeing cideries popping up across from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. So if you're headed into Philly, say you're you're going to be passing through there uh, before Thanksgiving or on the way back, do stop in at this location. Uh, I really want to put that word out there because Current Cider has been so supportive of this podcast from the get-go when I first put out a call to commercial cider makers to help support a podcast that promotes cider uh, all around the world. And, you know, he got on it straight away. So when you're out and about, especially on the East Coast, always ask the store that you're at or the bar, are they serving a current cider? By supporting them, you also support cider going up around the world. On last week's episode 153, the recording with Claude Jacquelaire on his travels to Kazakhstan to find the world's largest apple tree, I had also mentioned that I had been gifted a medlar and a quince, and that was Quincy Quince and Muggsy Medlar. Well, those two are out in the orchard, but what I'd found out from Husada Yuan is that he had gotten these medlars from Scott's Farm up in, I guess it's like Dummerston, Vermont, which is really over the border from my location. So I headed up there and got myself some more medlars uh, in hopes of blooding the medlar so I could have a taste, have a taste of my first medlar. So I actually have one here in hand who is more than happy to go the way of the medlars and be consumed, believe it or not. That's kind of the way it goes. So this one is not a talking palm. Uh, it had been sitting outside at room temperature. I have it in my hand right now. I'm going to have this experience with you <laughs> right now. I'm feeling it. I feel a couple lumps in there, so it's maybe not totally blet. But as I'm squeezing it, it's actually coming up out. This like brown, a kind of light brown uh, applesauce is what it looks like. So I'm going to try to taste it. I'm going to smell. It smells not fermented. A little, well, how would you... Kind of cocky to tell you the truth. Mm. Mm. I think those are seeds. It's kind of sweet. Yep, that's definitely a seed in there. And these, I had found out the variety are Giant Brita, which I also have growing in my little spot of Ciderville. They're quite small bushes right now. Um... I feel a number of seeds, so that's what was hard in there. 
Mm, it's very mushy. Kind of like unsweetened applesauce. I could see how people would make a jam out of it. Mm, it's gooey. I also hear that people eat it with a spoon, but I don't think that would really work so well. Um, really tasty. It's a mouthful. And um, you have, have to maneuver around the seeds. Cause don't, I don't want to, you can hear me crunching on that. I don't want to clamp down with my teeth there. But this, these medlars this year are, are pretty big. And um, I'm pretty stoked because I got a whole bag of them. And I'm going to have a bullet the medlar party with my friends. So I'll keep you posted on that as that goes along. Uh, what I found out is if you leave them out at room temperature, they ripen really quickly. But right now I'm keeping them uh, pretty cold in hopes that I'll be able to share them and not just be eating them all to myself. I don't know. Well, we'll see. This is a whole new process with me because at this point I really haven't been able to have medlars except in uh, Europe. And I didn't, did not bring any home. Well, I'm going to take a little break here. It really seeds. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to be heading up to uh, Prince Edward Island. And uh, I'll be filling you in on my recording there with Apple Falls a Cider Company. Mm. Yum. It's sort of your original surf safe food safety song, I guess. <laughs> but it's focused on an apple pie. It goes like this. Neath the crust of the old apple pie, there is something for you and for us. It may be a pin that the cook has dropped in, or it may be a dear little fly. It may be a rusty old nail, or a piece of the pussy cat's tail. You never can tell by the sight or the smell what's neath the crust of the old apple pie. <laughs> well, isn't that an analogy for <laughs> Better to sing it after dessert than before. <laughs> and then in, in a similar silly vein, as um, some of you, I think this one does go back, um, is, is better known. Um, when, when it's apple picking time in Orange, New Jersey, will be a peach of a pear. I know we can't elope. But honey do be mine, and I'll throw my arms around you like a watermelon vine. Cause when it's apple picking time in Orange, New Jersey, we'll be a peach of a pear. As I mentioned on last week's podcast, over this past weekend I was at a harvest dinner. And as always, after dinner, we sing some tunes and playing the banjo and leading that was David Gott. Fine fellow. I always enjoy having him lead away. And I'm hoping that he'll be at the Franklin County Cider Pub Sing next year to do even a little bit more. So stay tuned for that. It's time now to head to our featured chat with the folks at Apple Falls a Cider Company. This is based up in Prince Edward County, that is in Ontario, Canada. If you recall, I've been rolling out a number of recordings from my trip to that region of the world that I was fortunate to take with Ryan Monkman of Field Bird Cider. Ryan sponsored this trip, and uh, you know, it was really all out of pocket from him. So I do believe that the Ontario makers really owe a little bit of, uh, I don't know what you say, a little bit of highlighting for that guy there too. In fact, Ryan was supposed to be at Franklin County Cider Days recently. And as I mentioned last week, he had to cancel because his uh, second child with Nicole came a little bit early. So Aspen was born and uh, sounds like everything's going well. But in the meanwhile, like everybody who's trying to like <laughs> keep it keep it on the the right side of the the budget, he's trying to keep it things together. So if you are in the area of Toronto or Ontario and you go into one of the stores that sells libations such as cider, 
do ask for field bird cider. Give them a little bit of love because doing something like this, bringing me up there was a big undertaking. So I've been holding on to this uh, chat for a while because it's taken a little bit to record because we were both out in the orchard and in the cider house. And I like to make sure that I am able to sit down and get it edited for you. So I'll be narrating as we go along. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory here. I first arrived there with Ryan and we walked into this large fruit stand and that is the Apple Falls Cider Company is part of Campbell Orchard, which is a, well, essentially you're looking at like the third generation coming along. It was started by Colin Campbell's father, who unfortunately, as you'll hear, uh, was died unexpectedly in a plane crash. And Colin took over the farm, um, and he and his wife, Diane, uh, did that for many years. I think it was back in 1979. They'd been kind of rolling that out. He met her in college. And then they had their their children, and they have a daughter named Amelia and also a son, John. Perhaps there's another child there. I, I didn't really hear that. But Amelia met Matt Oskamp, and the two of them are the folks behind Apple Falls Cider Company. But you really get a sense here that it's a a family scene happening there. Uh, There's a lot of love, a lot of laughter. In fact, some of the laughter was so loud, I had to like tone it down a little bit on the editing. But I just really enjoyed my time with these uh, people. Uh, Primarily, it was Matt and Colin. So it's going to begin this chat with both myself and Matt walking out of the large fruit stand where they're selling pies, and it's kind of like a a lot of value-added product. And in the backside there, there's a tasting room, and then you walk out into this outdoor seating area called the Cider Garden, and then there is just a hillside of orchard and uh, quite an interesting landscape. So we're going to be talking about that, walking you through that, and then we'll be making our way into the cider house. But there's a number of little trinkets along the way that are quite interesting, and I'll be putting up photos and even a video to, uh, well, you'll get the links in that to the show notes. Again, this is episode 154, and it's called Turning Straw into Gold. Apple Falls Cider, based in Prince Edward County, Ontario. Can you see mm-hmm. all along there? Yes, I, I can, can yeah. take you up on Thick. the hill. Um, yeah. Those are all of our Pick Your Own Orchard as wow. well. Wow. And then, as you get closer to the wind fan, that's kind of where we have some of... Uh, the spies and the russets and, and stuff like that. So the wind fan or like a windmill, uh, what are you using to produce? Is that for water? No, that's actually frost protection. Definitely. So this, this, this property is owned by the Campbell family, mm-hmm. which is what you see as you're kind of driving up to it. And it's like a full service area. And then you have this tasting room that you just opened up a year ago. That's right, yeah. Holy cow, yeah, so wow. Amelia and I, we just had this dream, you know, Amelia's family farm, and we always have loved cider. We have always yeah. said to ourselves, like, oh, we should start a cider company one day. Like, you know, how hard could it be? And then uh, <laughs> last year, or I guess two years ago, Amelia was just like, Matt, let's let's do this. Let's do it now. Stop talking about it, and like, let's actually go ahead and try. Yeah. So we were lucky enough to get a, a grant from the local government here to help with our uh, startup costs. Mm -hmm. And once we got that, it was sort of like a, well, I guess we have to do this now because we we got the grant, so. When you and Amelia started this, were you making cider on the side as like a hobby? We were, yeah. So the orchard, uh, Colin got his cider house and press uh, in 1989, which is the same year that Amelia and I were born. Okay. So it's actually called Amelia Cider House, and I'll show you that when we go back. But um, so every time he would press some cider, 
we would ask to just for him to fill up a carboy for us. Mm -hmm. And then from there we would do, you know, our different batches and experiments mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So we had been doing cool. that for a number of years, um, sort of just like perfecting stuff and, and learning obviously as you go. Um, Definitely. But nothing was like super spectacular in my opinion. But I think, you know, you kind of have to take that leap because as soon as you scale up into actually doing this, um, you know, bigger scale and uh, for the public and all this other stuff, then your entire process is going to change anyways. Right. So we didn't actually dwell too hard or too long on that. Mm-hmm. Um, just sort of jumped in head first. Yeah, well, that's sometimes what you need to do, yeah. you know, a little leap here and it's it's going to be risky. I mean, it you're is. in a farming kind of industry, so well, that's exactly a certain, right. you know, there's always risk. Yeah. Oh, it's intrinsic to the the system. So we walked up from the main store, a pass was like older trees that they had here past the new little vineyard spot up on the rise looking back and now Matt's taking me on this nice walk I don't know it's like a football field length if not yeah. like a football field and a half length mm -hmm. walking along this place and we're gonna go a little higher because now we're so close to the water yeah. that I have to see it That's right. and there's like a big old like a wood duck or something like that okay. box. Exactly. What duck house? All right, I'm getting my scores for my nature That's right. thing. So a cute little pond here. I guess you're not swimming up here at all anymore. No. Too bad that that. Oh, it's a tree. tree fell over because yeah. it was it was up in the in the air like it looked really cool. Really nice. Oh yeah, but, that yeah. happens. And then so higher up you have something going on too. Yeah, that's the, kind of the area that John has been working on and <clears> clearing out. So it's. It's going to be like a, a nice park one day oh. uh, with maple tree. You can hear a frog or something. I can, yeah. And you have some little spots. And then we turn around and we look back here. And I'm going to get a view of this, yeah. which I could only imagine what it looks like during apple blossom time. Oh, yeah. exactly. And if like, not think then. Of that with just like beautiful white and pink. And... Oh, I can't even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and. Right now, I'm seeing the little baby apples coming out. Know, they, yeah. They're all like really like Exciting. kicking out. Yeah. Do you do the pruning, or do you have a crew that comes in? We actually we have um, a bunch of offshore workers that do that help Colin with most of the stuff. He's the brains behind the apples, and I just you know take credit for the cider. So he's like he's the grower, and he does all that stuff. I'm learning a lot, just uh, you know trying to soak everything in mm -hmm. from him. So. He actually offers a pruning seminars during oh, nice. pruning, so wow. which are open to the public. People can sign up, which is always a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. I'm learning from that. Um, but yeah, he's he's always busy doing stuff. He's the guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could tell. He's been doing this for a long time, huh? He has. Yeah. How many yeah. years would you guess? Well, he took the farm over. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk to him when we get there. Okay, we'll it's get. A, we're gonna must go be get. in the mid, mid to late seventies. All right. He took it over. Yeah, that's a while. That's a yeah. while, no doubt. Wow. And his dad what a was the one who really started and this place. And it's, so and, it's uh, a third generation essentially, right? With yes. a million, it would be the third generation. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Let's talk cider making. Okay. So you, you started off as a, a hobbyist doing that, and, uh, you know, a year into it, just a, a year in, there's been a lot to, like, get it going. For At sure. this point, anything looking back in that short amount of time that you would have done differently? Basically, my philosophy on, on this business and, and cider making and stuff like that is very lean. So I try to not invest too much money or time into something um, or try... I 
I really try not to plan ahead. As you know, kind of weird that as that sounds, hmm. uh, because the plan is ultimately going to change. So when you are flexible and lean enough to make a decision quickly and change things on the fly, then uh, you can just react mm -hmm. very fast. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what we tr we went into this doing. And uh, when we first started, we had I bought one tank, and what what kind of tank? Just a, it was a stainless steel 2,000 liter tank, fermentation tank, uh, no jackets on it, nothing, just very not a variable bones. tank. It was a variable lid. Okay, okay, yeah. a variable lid. Okay, good. And um, we filled that up with cider, and I got my primary fermentation going. And then I realized, you know, a couple or like a couple weeks after that, I was like, oh, I guess we're gonna need another tank because I need something to rack into, <laughs> which is like a very basic thing, right? But How long does it take you to get a tank up here? It, Probably not too long, right? Cause it's a lot of... longer than you think, especially oh, when I was doing this in the fall oh, when funny. everyone else is buying tanks. And oh, we are yep. undergoing a huge boom in this industry uh, in Ontario. Insider. In cider, in beer and in wine, wine right? Yep. Everyone okay, sort yep. of seems to be starting that up. Everybody so. needs a tank. We, um, we were lucky enough that we had some friends that are in the business and a winery in the county hinterland uh, have been sort of our like big brother nice. through this whole operation and they lent us some tanks to get us through our first uh, batch. But um, yeah, so obviously like things like that is, but really it didn't hold me back anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe I got lucky, but I find it was a great way for us to save a bunch of money up front and to cut our cost down. Um, another thing is that we had no space. Um, yeah, where are you doing this? It's right, somewhere in the back corner. Exactly. And wow. um, so we were lucky enough that we have I mean, this family farm mm -hmm. that we could essentially like mooch off of throughout yeah. this whole process. But um, that's one thing where I think if we had, if I was to do it all over again. You're not mooching off of it. You're not mooching. We're going to take, we're going to re recant that, right? You're not yeah. mooching <laughs> off of it. You're, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Busted. Yeah, you're yeah. not mooching. I know you don't mean it that way, but you know, when you're like working well, and scraping we're everything. We're definitely, um, yeah. we have a huge advantage because I can use the farm's resources. Yes. Uh, That's and, a, yeah. and apples right. and, and all this other stuff that, um, you know, we, I could basically find a corner of the cold room or of the cider house and set up mm, a tank mm. and get going that way before investing a ton of money into a new building. Yeah. Um, we did put an addition onto the cider house, uh, but again, I think I put, we put the addition up, I moved my tanks in, and now I'm already mm -hmm. out of space. So I need to put something else up soon. So I wonder, are you being lean or are you like the kind of guy who's like, you know, I'm not sure if this is really going to fly. And so I don't want to make a full commitment. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, because you know, I mean, you're, you're you're coming from the 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 hobbyist side of cider making. Yep. So I mean, I don't want to say that I'm not confident because we were always confident in the product, and right. Um, you know, I I knew we were going to be successful. I think you have to have that uh, thought, you know, in any business, mm -hmm. so that you you have that drive to continue mm -hmm. even when things don't necessarily go your mm -hmm. way. I'm gonna throw this over to the side maybe, huh? I don't know. Yeah. I will, a little piece of wood. Sure. Hope that's not bad. But no. There we go. Some good apple wood. Take that home. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> um so yeah, it's it is tough. I mean it, it's a huge risk. It's not like um I haven't put a ton of money into it because Mila and I definitely have. But it's um we just tried to do everything ourselves uh, instead of going, um, you know, possibly to other avenues for for getting startup funds or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm a but like I said before, both Emil and I retain our full time jobs, so we mm -hmm. are only doing this on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have quite the, the little tasting room set up. I right, mean, yeah, a, no, it's... Not the whole room, but, you know, it's a nice presentation. Yeah. Really I'm, nice, some I'm nice swag. I like to say that it's our uh, second full-time job, essentially. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Because we do it. We are working every single day and every single... Yeah. Well, essentially every day. So has anything stuff. surprised you since you started a year ago? Surprised? Yeah, in terms us? like, you know, the reception and all I that? I mean, yeah, I just, we're... 
blown away by the amount of positive um, you know, reception from family, friends, and, and everyone, mm -hmm. and the amount of help that mm. everyone that is out there. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it, someone's thinking of doing something like this, I would say talk to your neighbors and talk to your to other people that are in your area yeah. uh, doing the same thing. There's really no sense of competition in cider making and, and stuff over here. Everyone is on the same team because mm -hmm. the more successful cider, especially you know in Ontario and in Prince Edward County in this area, then that brings out some more people. And we're already seeing now tourists come through and they're just, we're doing a cider route in Prince Edward County, which yeah. is pretty cool. And that yeah. is something oh, that my has, goodness, right? no one would ever think to do that right. even you know, three years ago, you can do right, that. Right, absolutely. So, Is there a certain kind of style that you're reaching for in your We um, We started out very dry. Uh, well, drier than the current, I would say, popular market mm. or, or something. Okay. Um, just because the process of cider making, I think it's easier to do a drier cider than it is yeah. to a sweeter cider for all dry. these reasons. Yeah, naturally, yeah. Yeah, so that was definitely something that I wanted to do first to mm -hmm. minimize that sort of risk. Mm -hmm. And then um, we, we always try to have like a standard dry, something that's a little off dry or semi-sweet. Mm -hmm. And then we have a bunch of um, experimental stuff that we can do with small batches. Mm. Again, one of the... What's experimental to you? Like a strawberry cider blend. Okay, all right. We're doing Fruit ciders. A kombucha and cider mix, mm. which is very different. Wow. Um, and yes, and then, you know, I've, we've experimented with some maple syrup uh, blends and some mm -hmm. honey mm -hmm. in the cider, which isn't too crazy. I think that's kind of like the norm yeah, yeah. nowadays. What, what I'm seeing a lot of maple syrup being used up in Ontario for sure, too. Yeah. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, you got great Canadian maple syrup. My goodness. Yeah, we have, uh, so we have a blend called Heritage, which uses maple syrup. Mm -hmm. and we actually get the source of maple syrup from the sugar bush that's directly behind our property. So if you just oh. basically keep going uh, south. Wow, that's local. You run into their stuff, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yes, it is. That's and, that's like a, within a hundred miles, you know, less than oh, that. Less, yeah. That's a ten mile radius of all your products. Wow. We um and we sell the same maple syrup that we use in the store for people to take home as well. So mm, nice. Basic, yeah. We really, I think I want to keep up that image, right? Of where if what you see is what you get when you come down here. So. We're looking at a lot of, of apple trees. That's the same apples that go into our cider. So when you're sitting outside on the patio and you're enjoying a glass of cider, you're watching the trees. You know, that's you're basically looking at directly where it came from. Yeah, I do like how you have that little cider garden set up. It's mm -hmm. really inviting. Mm -hmm. Now, when do the food tr trucks start coming? We've had them um, already. Already. Yeah. So as soon as the weather gets warm, as you, soon as they the start showing up. Is nice and. You know, like I say, there's always different events going on. So we had a big event for apple blossoms and mm -hmm. we had um, a jerk chicken, jerk a bag of chicken came down for that. Are they coming from Toronto, the food trucks? No, we're doing, there's a, so many food trucks that have started up around here. Right here, wow, so, that's fantastic. Wow, yeah, what a great just, way to Just at the service. end of the road is essentially where they are coming from. And then we have Burger Revolution from Belleville. So they come out and make wow. these gourmet hamburgers, delicious stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we always try to include a deal with cider when they come so to incentivize people to come get a glass yeah um, and of course you want to have cider with food so exactly. nothing better okay let's go i'm just going to grab some some glasses okay we great do a quick tasting okay and there then i'll show you our cider house perfect and then uh, all righty well matt was getting glasses in walked colin campbell that's amelia's father and i was able to ask him straight out about that wind fan out in the orchard. Uh, 10 acres? Ten, one fun. wind fan yeah. will cover 10 acres. 550 feet each in a, in a circle. Oh my goodness. And it rotates every five, five minutes, five and a half minutes, it does this, a circuit. Thank you. Wow, so, and how, what is the length of the, the fan itself? I don't know, the blades? You mean? The blades, yeah. 20 feet? 20 yeah. feet, yeah. What What's the process that you know, is undergoing to actually, no, to, um, the, 
that raises the temperature. Is it just circulating? Well, it, How does it work? No, it, there's an up, a heat rise. Right? Yeah. So there's an upper heat layer, like a, yeah. a band of warm air up X number of feet above the ground. They, 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 I saw a picture, I can't remember all the numbers. Sure. And then that thing is, it pulls that down mm -hmm. and blows it along the ground. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, it, it is, as, it's like a helicopter on a stick. Oh yeah. No, okay. And it wow. wakes me up. Well, the four and those are rattling from the house. It's, it's a 454 Chevy that's running wide open. And wow. It's, Catherine probably has a couple too. Do you, Catherine, do you have any wind fans? No, I don't because we're so close to the Oh, yeah. Crazy. I mean, we can try, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you having any troubles? Sometimes yeah. Spring. Catherine has Sandbank's Winery. Oh, nice. She oh. just moved in down the road. Hi, Rio and Color from Cider Chat. I was oh, that's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, just what asking a... about the wind fans and how they work. It didn't even come on this year. It didn't even come close to coming on no. this year. No. But last it's because it was ran, so warm. Yeah, last year it ran 20 hours. It burned $1,000 worth of propane. But well, we had a decent crop. And in 2015, when we had the frost, I remember on the wagon you could see sort of the, the line in the tree of yeah. where the buds were still okay and the buds had all been damaged by because in that hollow back there no exactly. kidding oh, wow really so this in. is a key tool to have here without it you would really not have any well we it's never like any chance we never yeah. had problems and we didn't we canceled our crop insurance because it was very expensive yeah, yeah. all the government so regulations. too crazy I, I must help yeah. Bye-bye, nice, okay. yeah, yeah. nice meeting you. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's doing the job. Yeah, so it has an automatic, uh, I paid extra to get an automatic uh, startup thing. So it's set up like minus, no, it's set up plus one or two. So when the temperature drops to, to like plus one, boom, it comes on and it starts up slowly. Uh, runs for five minutes of like a, an idle and then gets it warmed up and then just, yeah. just automatically revs itself up and then when the temperature uh, if it, when the temperature comes back up to like plus three I think it just shuts off and again it goes into a cool down mode where it is idles back wow. for five minutes and then just automatically shuts off I don't know how it does it all yeah, yeah. The, it, the, it's not um, the the blades are vertical right they're not horizontal they're not turning. no it rotates. it rotates oh it rotates like around a, 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 oh okay it rotates, rotates around in yeah. a circle and when I last year wow. was it last year it was I was out there and it was like it was plus a half at the digital thermometer was, I was looking at the strawberry beaming the laser thing at the strawberry leaves and it was plus a half and as that fan would go by me it would uh, go up to six. Oh, and then in five right. and a half minutes, it would go uh, back down to the, and then boom. Colin, you've been doing this for a while. This is like your your dad did this, and well, my dad, now it was you're my doing dad's that? Program. And then he was unfortunately killed in, in a plane crash, actually, with all our neighbors <laughs> in oh 1979 when goodness. I was in university. So my mom wow. was just getting out of Dodge, and I had to decide when I was like 21 wow. to... Uh, either just move to suburbia or, uh, or do something with it. So Any I've already been doing it a lot anyways because my dad worked full time for the Ontario Hydro. Okay. So I was sort of, that was sort of my summer job, although I never seemed to get paid, although I never had any expenses either. Be being <laughs> yeah. here, being here, right, 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 right. Um, huh. And what were you studying in school? Well, I have a, a honors degree in agricultural economics and business. So. Okay, I think you're pretty well yeah. positioned. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and at that point, what was, I mean, we were in the this, like, uh, you know, kind of like farm stand with everything with pies and ice cream and meat pies, and what was it like when you took over? Was this already well, kind of set up? Well, None of no. this? This was just a concrete building. It, this wasn't here. That went there. That little half wasn't there. And uh, was, we just, my, we just had built it, and then my, my dad was killed, right? So, oh. What a tragedy. Yeah, get, get it going. So. Yeah. But he planted a lot of trees and cleaned up a lot of stuff because there was 27 old cars here and you couldn't even see the water and the house was a wreck and we left wow. a beautiful home on the road. My mother was not impressed moving to this place. Stuart and I love it. We had a mini bikes and racing. <laughs> but, uh, my mom was not happy. Mm. So that's when, when he died 10 years later. She was just, I'm out of my mind. She had to wait to get out. Mm. Is your mom still around? No. Well, you really kind of changed around the whole situation here. So when you're... Well, a lot of this can be accredited to Diane, though. Like, Diane, 
Uh, I do I do more of the outside stuff. Like I'm like I've been on the tractor all day yesterday and today. And I was on the tractor when they when the north made you were here. But Diane I, I often will drive by shitty looking places and I go that's what our place would look like if Diane wasn't being <laughs> As a reminder, yeah, yeah. I, I can go into a bit, I have like a, a six business sense, and I can see a business that are run by men, or I can see a business that has the women's touch. And women just are so much better at, like Diane painted with all the shoes and all the stuff, and I would never have done that. I mean, yeah. It was fine. There was nothing wrong with the paint that we had. <laughs> <laughs> but it, fresh but it adds a different it kind of finesse to it. Well, and that's the yin and the yang. It's a beautiful and, thing. And, yeah. Uh, she's yeah. more of a perfectionist. I'm more of just get the job. Get it job. done. Yeah. That's lovely. And, and it seems to work. It's good. Out. Yeah. 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 Well, We've there been you go. Married for thirty some years. I don't know. <laughs> We're married right at the university. Right? Wow. 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 Congratulations to that. After that quick chat in the farm store, we're next moving to the cider house. But along the way, we stop to take a look at a green tractor that I think all you folks out there in the orchard would be very keen to hear about. From my uncle. My goodness. And, uh, 1937. Yeah, 80 years old. What is it called? How do you say that? Kaksha. No kidding. Yeah. I haven't even heard that. No, it's, it's a famous old variety. And Hart Par was the original. I think Kaksha bought it out. And then I think... I think Case ended up absorbing it all eventually. Um, wow, that is. But this amazing. is one of the original tractors, and it's an orchard tractor. And that's why an the orchard tractor. Yeah, see no how the kidding. fenders are. No. The fenders are rounded so that they wouldn't be affecting. Right here. You see uh, the branches the back. of the trees. The tires no wouldn't knock kidding. the apples off wow. the tree. And, and it runs. It's, it's a six-cylinder gas, and, and uh, there's only two of them. I, I know there's two because we saw an ad that says only one available, only one in the world, and I said no. No I got kidding, 1937. Do you put it in parades? Ever? I just got it. I don't you just any, got it. No kidding. I don't really have a truck to, or a trailer wow. to drag it around. Or, yeah, one really, step at a time. We had some beautiful pickup trucks. I went around and had. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in due time, right? Yeah. Colin took a video of that tractor rolling through the orchard. So if you'd like to see a photo and a video of this 1937 cockshoe tractor looking as green as a dark bean, we'll go to this here episode 154, Turning Straw into Gold. Or you could also see it at the Cider Chat YouTube channel. Up next, we're rolling into the Cider House, drinking some cider direct from the tanks, and continuing our conversation with Matt Oskamp, and coming right up with Colin Campbell. You know, we have this is value added. We do candy apples and caramel apples where you take like a $10 bushel of apples and you turn it into 400, you know? Here you take a $10 bushel of apples and you turn it into like like $20 or $30, yeah, really. Yeah. So it's always value added. It's, yeah, it's yeah, the only, and yeah. And as small as we are, it's the only way that we can make a living. Yeah, you need you it. Know? Yeah. When the wholesale, sure. there's, there's been over two to 3,000 acres of apples torn out in the vicinity and uh, planted into grapes. Well, that Catherine owns one of the biggest uh, wineries, Sandbanks Winery in the area. Mm. We, we, we introduced you to there and she uh, just happened to move into here up into a beautiful peach home. <laughs> mm, <good laughs> her, her winery's on the uh, extreme good for her. others. Oh, here we go. It's on the south shore of Prince Edward County. Well, we're on the Cheers. north. Cheers. To, to the best of luck and a, a bright future. Uh, yeah. Or a continued bright future, because yeah. your well, future is pretty bright already. Right? It is, it is uh, the future, and it's the only thing that's constant is change. Like when you, you, pe great. you sit great. and, really great. and uh, do the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results, that's yeah. the definition of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on. So we're drinking the cider. What is this called? This is Heritage. So this mm. is our. Maple syrup, we just add a little bit of maple syrup during bottling. Mm -hmm. um, sort of, there's actually a re, uh, reimagination mm. of a cider that we did our first year, last year. Uh, so I changed some things around, used a slightly different yeast and stuff. And uh, but no, Carbonated. I, <clears throat> yep, yeah. it's carbonated. Um, I'm really, really happy fruit with forward. it. Really mm -hmm. fruit forward, great clarity. 
No, Matt was just at a mm. uh, course he took in Niagara where it was all cider. And you said your cider was the only one. And they tried cider from Ireland, well, they, England, all over. There was other ones that people liked. But, but did. yours was, <laughs> you, you said you were the only one where everyone put their hand up. Oh, people come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. We <laughs> hadn't gotten to the full to the full thing yet. Was that at the I don't want to boast too highly on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, the same thing about, you know, cider. It could be kind of seasonal or, you know, like vintage or that harvest. It is Sometimes yeah. you just have some really darn good luck. Yeah. And may it always be so. Yes. Well, this is, this juice was made from the apples that were growing last year. And last summer was very cool and wet. Mm -hmm. Every other day it seemed to rain. It was the tent. We barely yeah. got out in the boat. We barely used our pool. Anything, and it was just cold, wow. and I was wow. worried that the, the sugar content of the apples would be down, and yeah. they were it was. a little bit. And mm -hmm. but the summer before, where the original, our first match first year, yeah. was a super drought, uh, incredibly dry, incredibly hot up. every day. Yeah. But we watered all the orchards mm. with everything, mm. and so we had the heat, and we had the water, and we had a beautiful crop of apples. Nice. And uh, and the, the sugar content was a lot higher. Mm. It was than normal. This is a really drinkable cider. I mean, what's the ABV on that? It's a 6.4, 6.5, 6 something so like that. So not super high? No. And um, oh, I'm going to ask you something else about it. Uh, it's called your Heritage. Yeah, it's so everything's unfiltered. Unfiltered, okay. Yeah, we don't. We don't have a filter just yet. Just racking it over? and Just lots of racking lots and of then racking. temperature control. Mm -hmm. um, we put pears in this too, did we not? There are some pears in this Ooh, one. Oh, yeah. wow, we yeah. Have, we have probably more pears than most people. Yeah. And, uh, and then they have a pear cider too. We have a pear in as well, we'll try. Is that peri pears or is it um, like more culinary pears? Culinary yeah. pears. Yeah. Culinary pears. No, well, culinary mean cooking? Yeah, eating. No, you these, know, are e these are, well, these are eating cooking. Most of our body of it would be Flemish Beauty, which is a Belgian variety mm. from 18... 20 or something from Belgium and that's it's it's the most hearty of all the pear varieties Flemish Beauty mm -hmm. and our favorite to eat and mm -hmm. last year again we had some so much moisture we didn't end up with some pear scab which again with the bonus of this business of mats right. we can boom we turn them into that's right into something else instead of just becoming a waste product right we've now turned it into a sort of yeah. turning lemons into lemonade Mm -hmm. No kidding. pears into Perry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that pears are happy for that. Did your dad or did you, you know, your family ever kind of like make cider just on the side for like, you know, family oh, We always have, you know, and yeah. I never really liked it. Uh, it's it was bland or, you know, very, <sighs> had no sweet. zip to it. And, and, and even Hubert, who's been, he's a German fellow who makes a lot of wine and his wife never liked the cider. And then boom, when Matt makes his, we take it and, and all of a sudden it's become her favorite drink. And mine too. I never drank it because often most ciders are very sweet that I don't like and mm -hmm. or don't have any, like, they're just, they're just boring. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I enjoy Matt's. I really like yeah. his heritage is my favorite. It's and, great. Uh, turning straw to gold. Yeah, I don't know how much you know about Ontario cideries or you know because you have had a tour but we do have a rule where you need five acres of apples or grapes to be on your property in order to start up a winery or cidery so um, that you know a lot of you don't have to use any of those apples that's on your property but you need at least five acres so at least we have the advantage that we get to use all of our five acres of I mean we have more than five but mm -hmm. um, which is something you don't always see mm. Fun. Mm -hmm. Really cool. But like this year we had ordered a few hundred trees from these these uh, heritage varieties for making cider from England, Kingston Black and Dabinet. Yeah. And the, I the, really it's the nursery went out of business because it was a really? two year waiting list and yeah. in that two year period they went out of business. And so we didn't get any trees this year but I think it's almost a blessing in disguise because so, I really... Uh, with Matt's knowledge of, of chemistry and whatever else, and, and with these new varieties like Liberty and, and Crimson Crisp, which, which don't require half the spraying a regular apple does, mm -hmm. and they're, they're really tart and, and, mm -hmm. and just a super nice apple. Yeah. I think that's the future, yeah. not, not the past. Well, that's what I was going to say uh, at University of Guelph. There's some 
you know, new studies that are just undergoing mm-hmm. right now. And um, one of those is determining whether these heritage cider varieties can actually uh, exist in a place like Ontario. And That's right. um, how they're going to grow, how fire blight is spread. Fire blight, how, they're very susceptible all to all the numbers. Of heritage ones. This study yeah. is only a year and a half or two years old, but um, at Ontario Craft Cider Association, we were given a, a little bit of a, a preview, and the numbers are not looking good. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's going to be it's a huge problem. I totally agree with Colin. I think we're going to be able to develop a new variety. Or if or use one that already exists mm-hmm. is just as good of a cider apple requires less spray you can use it for eating you know it has the tannins built in or I'm more of the I know that's not a romantic thing to say and that's why we say like you know this technology or science before romance but um, I think it's it's for the better That was Matt Oskamp bringing us out to the end of the chat. He and Amelia Campbell are the folks behind Apple Falls Cider Company, based on the north shore of Lake Ontario in Prince Edward County, and located at Campbell Orchard. You heard also from Colin Campbell of Campbell Orchard. Keep an eye out for this cidery and make sure when you're in the area to stop by. That's a full-service farm store. Nice folks, a fun story. And shoot, what about that amazing 1937 tractor? Again, go to the show notes if you want to see some more photos of this site and location. And once again, a big tip of the glass to Ryan Monkman of Field Bird Cider. You really want to try Ryan's ciders because what he's doing there is he's doing Sir Lee. He is aging on the Lees and Oak Barrel at Kenty Winery making a really delicious cidery also. And uh, what a guy. What he's doing up there is really something. In fact, all those Canadians, lovely folks, we are so lucky out there in Ciderville. I suspect that you're the type of person, when you go to the bar, you leave a tip for the bartender. Well, you could do that too for this here podcaster, that being me. <laughs> Just go to ciderchat.com, click on the page that says support, and you'll find a range of options to do that today, from a one-time donation to becoming a regular sponsor. Remember, in the world of cider, every sip counts. Back in season two, and let me clarify what I mean by that, I'm separating the, well, the number of episodes are divided into like four seasons now. So episodes one through 50 are season one and 50 to 100 are season two. And during season two, there was a guest podcaster by the name of Alex Crow, and he had uh, two episodes with Eve's Cidery and also the Finger Lakes Cider House, which is also known as Kite and String. Great episodes. You should totally listen to them. I'm going to have a link in the show notes to them. Again, that's episode 90, 91, and 96. So if you want to hunt that down. But uh, recently I reached out to Alex. Uh, be- besides being a, a great interviewer and helping out with getting some podcasts at locations that I can visit, He is also really into cider, of course, and he was on the East Coast and then he moved to the West Coast and we just caught up. So let me read a little note that he sent to me via email and to kind of catch you up with Alex. He says that he's living out in Washington and he's been busy working at Finn River, which is a wonderful cidery. He's working there as a cider maker and helping out in the orchard. And he's been scouring old orchards and roadsides for undiscovered cider apples and peri pears. You know, Alex, there are so many people doing that. Uh, It feels like, you know, all these little wildling trees are celebrities again, and you just can feel how happy they are. 
he says that he's had some really interesting finds to the point that he's now making a barrel of bittersweet juice for his own consumption and sharing with friends and a small quantity of perry. Mmm. He's got what he calls a one-barrel cidery where he can ferment 65 gallons in a plastic tank and rack to a French oak barrel to finish fermentation and age surly. Now, if you don't know what surly means, that means you're you're letting the cider condition and age on the yeast, the lees that, that settle out. And what you do there is you have primary fermentation. I'm actually doing the same thing, Alex. I have a barrel. It's not 65-gallon ga- barrel. It's a 25-gallon barrel. And so I have all the cider in there, and it's been fermenting very, very um quickly it seems almost a little too quick i wish it would slow down a little bit but anyways it's it's doing its thing i'm sure it's going to be fine and i'm going to just leave it in the barrel and then everything will kind of drop down and then you mix the yeast in that's kind of the parci- precipitants that have dropped down back into solution in the cider you have like a a little stir a lee stir is what it's called it's like a long handle thing that you stick into the barrel and swirl up the yeast again and you want to do that for about six weeks or so keep it in solution and then you could kind of let it settle down and the yeast settles down to the bottom and and so you might want to read up about this because it's a really cool thing i had ryan monkman on the barrels and batonage the mixing of the lees in is called batonage And uh, there's a lot of reasons to do this. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm so excited to hear that you're doing that. And I know a lot of folks are. He says then he's going to get some bottle for some traditional method carbonation, kind of like a champagne. And the rest goes into five gallon corny kegs, which I use to experiment with small batches. It's a great product development and setup. Just enough volume to allow experimentation, small enough to do at home without much infrastructure. Really cool. And also, he's also grafted, last spring he grafted over 200 standard-sized trees of cider varieties and local wild apples that he's evaluated and selected for, for trialing in an orchard. These will become the basis of a future orchard cidery. So... All right, Alex, I am so happy for you. You keep it up, and I'd like to hear as that that barrel continues to do its thing this fall, uh, I'll make sure that I get a bottle of mine, uh, Barrel Age Surly Cider to you, and I may we'll do a little bit of a trade there. Uh, either way, it's all good. We'll figure it out. I just wanted to share your letter to the listeners because I know that I I really enjoyed working with you. Best of luck out in the Pacific Northwest. I always like to know who our neighbors are way out there on the other side of Ciderville. Everything about cider and all the people out there just keep on blowing my socks off. So don't stop. We got to keep on moving on and have the focus on cider going up. This is Rhea Windcaller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. Yeehaw!